Okay, now we will do a rhombic dodecahedron. 2023 AMC 10A problem 18. Really quick, I will leave you with a reference for those of you who own the AOPS book, Intro to Counting and Probability. If you go to chapter 15, and you do the gray box question. I call them that because in the original text, the box that they're in is gray. It was an example that you do yourself. And the original problem was located on an AIME. That's the source. But they put it in here and they're gonna break it down in the explanation of the gray box's solution. So 15.5 is the gray box question. I don't know what page that's on, but I did just look that up. If you look at it, it's the great rhomba cuba octahedron problem, okay? And so you'll find it there at the 15 is kind of the culmination of the whole book. You practice everything you learn throughout the whole text and there's challenge problems at the end of it. So uh, this problem, very, very similar to the reasoning that you would do here, but that can't be. You know how I know? They say on the forums that intro to counting and probability isn't good enough to do well on AMC 10. You have to do intermediate for that, for real. I mean, because this, this can't be true, that a problem from, because this is 18. <sighs> no, those, that's too easy. We've got to use intermediate, right? That's what the kids on the forums say. No, actually, this book will get you 90%. I would say 90% or more of all counting and probability on the AMC 10 and 12 can be done with this text. Okay, so uh, don't listen to those kinds of statements when you hear them. They're just simply not true. What really happens is the kids on the forums don't realize how these problems connect to the ones that you are doing. So uh, I do have a course for that, probably going to be starting up again, maybe December or January. When I go through the text, I don't do a certain number of weeks. We go to every single question in the text, either in the class or as homework. So you will, you will do every single challenge problem in there and have a much more thorough understanding of the concepts. A rhombic dodecahedron is a convex polyhedron where each of the 12 faces is a rhombus and all of the faces are congruent to each other. I didn't actually use this fact, the congruence, I didn't really care. Uh, maybe it plays a role and I just didn't perceive what role it would play. The number of edges that meet at a vertex is either three or four, depending on the vertex. Okay, so edges meeting at one vertex, you know, something, this is one, two, three edges. So you're going to have, let's call that type X and the type where four would meet, you know, something like this, whatever. I don't know how it sets up, whatever. There'd be four like that. We'll call that type Y. Okay, so if I take all of the type X and I multiply it by three, I would have the number of edges that meet at type X. Okay, and if I take the number that meet at type Y and I take the, the amount of type Y there is meeting places of type Y and I do plus four Y, that has to equal the total number of edges that we have. Just logical, right? So we have how many faces? 12. 12 faces, how many on every single face you have a rhombus? How many edges does one rhombus have? Four. Then these are going to be, yes, they might be on two different rhombi. That's fine, a rhombus is. We don't really, I'm not really sure what the plural is exactly. But uh, they might be on two different ones, but they still count as an individual edge for all 12 faces. So this has to be 48. Okay, 48, this is going to have to equal because that's the total number of edges that you will have. At this point, I did want to pull out a formula that I did not mention in my small notebook class. Why? It's not in my small notebook. It should be, but when I come across it, I don't write it down. Maybe I'll go at it now. That formula I like to memorize as fav2. So the memory is fav2. And how it works is it's faces, A is add, like you're adding plus uh, vertices equals E is edges plus two. You could say it's my fave plus two as well. That would be fine as well. Faces plus vertices equals edges plus two. Maybe called Euler's formula, something like that. Anyhow, uh, if you take the number of faces, there's 12. 
you take the number of vertices and you say, well, each one has four vertices. Yes, but this is for a polyhedron. So in the polyhedron, that's only going to count as one vertex, even though it's on three different rhombi. So individually, I would count it three times. So in the context of the rhombus or the uh, polyhedron, you have to have a number here. And then we have what edges? Uh, the edges is going to have to be, think about it, in the, in the polyhedron. And you'll get this insight from this question solution. If you read that question solution thoroughly and you process, reading and looking are two different things. If you're looking at words and you go, I pronounced that word in my mind, that's not reading, okay? Uh, reading comprehension, really important. And to actually understand, right? Actually understand what you're reading is critical for then being able to apply what you learned here to this problem, which is exactly what I will do now. They mention that every edge being on two different, it has to be shared with another face. Every edge in the polyhedron, the three-dimensional object, every edge will be on two faces. No matter what you do, this edge right here is on this face and this face. And it's never on three faces. It can only be on two because they have to be bordered up to each other. Okay, so because of that, because it's on two different faces, then we have what? Uh, the 48, the number of edges that we said that you would have, the 48 total edges, because these are edges that meet at point X times three plus edges that meet at type Y times four is the total edges 48, but in the polyhedron, it's only 24. You have to cut that in half. And again, this is reviewed directly in that problem. Directly in that problem, they explain it in detail. I just looked at it right before I started this video to confirm this information because it made me think of it. So then what? That means this edges is only 24 for our polyhedron. And that means this is two, has to be 26 is plus two. And then that means this, the vertices must be 14. Well, how do we use that? Well, the X and the Y are essentially both types of vertices. You could call it vertex type three or whatever you want to call that and vertex of type four, right? Or X and Y as I'm calling them here. But then that means that vertex is actually on three different ones, which is why it's not going to count three times. It only counts once in the polyhedron. So what we need is X plus Y to equal what? 14, to equal 14. So what did I do? I didn't actually, I just, I started plugging in numbers. You could have 12 and zero. Is that possible? No, can't have zero for this. There has to be some, right? So if, if you think about it like slope, you're going to make this one go down, the Y value go down by three. That's all it is. It's a rate. The slope's a rate of change. So you're going to go down by three here. That means you're going to lose 12 from this value. You have to pick up 12 from this value, which is four. Do four and nine add to 14? They don't. And 12, 9, we go down to 6, and I go and I add 4 here, because that's how the rate of change will work. And there you go, 6 and 8, 14. So what are we looking for? What is the number of vertices at which exactly three edges meet? We're looking for the x value of 8. I will show you exactly what my solve looks like for this problem. So here's my solve for it. This is all the work that I did right there. I've got the fave two right here and I've got that here and that's it. It's really just that fast. The problem took, I don't know, 45 seconds, a minute for a problem 18. Why? Because you learned from this problem. You didn't just do it. You didn't just read, but the eyes, what you're looking at, you processed what you read. You thought about it. You rolled it over in your mind. Why did they tell me it has two faces on the great Ramba Cuba octahedron, which maybe you could say it's the grandfather, perhaps, of our rhombic dodecahedron here. And so we kind of grandfathered in the idea. Anyhow, a uh, small notebook class, last one this Sunday, coming up 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, as mentioned before. Catch you guys in the next video.